Hi, my name is Blessing Onibuchi. I'm from Abia State. I'm a product designer and I'm currently staying in Lagos. first child and I am the first daughter so I'm Anada and I'm the eldest in my house we are actually five in number so I am the first child I have three brothers and then a sister hmm. Anada is um, um, the first daughter in the family but it's more like you're yeah, the second mother in the family. That's what, as in the, that name Ada already, just automatically make you the first, the second mother in the family. You don't even need a soothsayer to tell you. You don't need anybody to tell you about it. You just find yourself in the family. It's not like a position that you choose. Um, it's not like something you just tell yourself, I want to come out and I become another. You just come out and then you you start seeing that you have younger ones. And at the end of the day, you are the other, you are the other. There's nothing you can do about it. But the only thing I know as an other in an Igbo family means that automatically you are expected to have sense whether you like it or not and you will collect plenty bits you know <laughs> you will collect plenty bits in as the elders you will take blame for things that you don't even know about um when your siblings misbehave and you're there automatically you are the one that is going to take the beating because you are expected to have like cautioned your siblings <laughs> okay the good part is that um you eat the biggest meat in the house <laughs> yeah you take the biggest share as the eldest as the other in the house so there's this thing that you people call adani rukwan meaning you always have to like get the best part of the meat or whatever it is that they are yeah you're they're sharing in the house and with that authority that you have you can use it to like maneuver some kind of things you you can you're the only one that can talk to your siblings anyhow send them on an errand and um i think that's that's the only the good part then the bad part mm. you will take blame for everybody in the house you are expected to be the most responsible person in the house because you're the one that is taking the lead and um they just feel like because you are the other however you behave that's how your siblings are going to like follow up so if you're misbehaving automatically your siblings are mis going to be mis misbehaving so you can't even some kind of things you just can't even try it because you remember the kind of family that you come from and I don't know if it's because I was like if because I'm the other but my mom was very strict on me that at some point I thought that I was actually adopted because of the beating I used to collect there <laughs> serious beating no serious beating you know this kind of beating that when they finish beating you will know that you actually took beating <laughs> um there was a time there was this particular incident that happened um my brother did something i don't think i i can't really remember what he did then but i know that it wasn't my fault and then my mom came back and she beat the hell out of me like every other person around was trying to tell her that mommy she's not the one that did this thing um um is 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 um chigose that's my brother's name it's chigose that did this thing I'm like it's a lie yo you cannot tell me that this girl will be here and this thing will be happening in this house on um, well, that day i felt as in I felt hated that day. since then that actually whatever that my mom did then actually made me like anytime my siblings misbehave before my mom even come back I'm already I've already started cautioning them so growing up already they've said 
having this fear that ah, this is how my elder sister is so so everybody just have to like respect her give her her chance like that and then another incident that happened was one day that my parents traveled so they left us in the house so we felt like we had freedom and the way i play with my brother because i grew up with boys i play rough play with them because <laughs> the last girl was like after six years i'll be seven years after my mom has finished giving birth that was the last that was the time that she actually gave birth to the last girl so i was more like the only girl in the house at that moment so my parents traveled and they left the house for us for me as the eldest so we thought we had freedom we invited um other our friends other kids to come and play with us Man, that day was like we, we were having fun and my parents did not even mention that they were coming back that day at all <laughs> we played that to the point that we didn't even know that it's late already we weren't even thinking about eating or anything that's how my parents we just heard the, the gates knock on the gates and then i ran out to open the gate <laughs> thinking that it might just be like anybody and then boom my dad and my mom hey god <laughs> If you see that day my parents came back, my dad was mad like I've never because my dad is not this kind of person. He barely talks. So he barely even talk to you or barely complain about anything. He will just keep warning you and telling you this is your last chance so I'm giving you last warning, you know. So this particular day my dad beat the hell out of me. He flogged me that the next day I couldn't go to school because I felt ill and that was actually the last the very last time that my dad beats me that I, th I, w I think I was I was seven seven eight then being the second mom is being um it, it actually helps you to have a very good relationship with your your parents I had a very good relationship with my dad and my mom um, especially my mom my mom was like my best friend I could literally tell her anything she actually made it that way that I, w I could be free with her to tell her anything at all I've always had a good relationship with her and growing up and then she started understanding that I'm actually growing up to be a responsible um, woman it actually helped our relationship more um, we we start bonding and then I start understanding all that discipline that they were as in everything that they were trying to impose on me then trying to make me know that I have a responsibility ahead. So as I was growing up it's just started becoming clear and then I started picturing myself as my mom. I started picturing myself um how to be a mom and a dad. To my siblings somehow i i wouldn't say that my mom's training was bad i i'm happy i'm happy she was tough on me that way because it helped me it helped me have helped me to avoid some things because you cannot talk to a boy you cannot talk to a boy because you know that if your mom hear about it so it helped me all through my secondary school I was I kept to myself aside from having female friends I never had any male friend and um, I didn't really ex had all those teenage life that you have to explore as a teenager it was actually when I entered the university that I started dating and at that time me and my mom were very close so I could tell her who I was dating then so she knew every single thing about me then my relationship with my mom have been it's it's been great on up to up to the time that up to the time that she died <laughs> we had a very good relationship I still miss her and I wish I could talk to her anytime I want again like the way it used to be I miss all that I miss 
every single time every single memory that we shared together i i did myself as lucky because of the kind of family that i came out from my parents never for one day stopped showing me love i knew love from home even before i left like even before i became independent i have always known what genuine love is all about so it's also helped me with my um self-confidence and relating with people in general being the other my relationship with my sibling like i said i grew up with boys so growing up i was just raised to be tough and i've always been like that with them and the thing is that um your relationship with your sibling when you're small and when you guys have grown to be adults it's it will never be the same i don't know about others but for me it has it wasn't the same sometimes i wish that we'd never stop being the children that we used to be because it was easier then you don't have to deal with stubborn boys you don't have to be the one to be shouting every time to make them do right things and then i think that sometimes they don't feel like you're overdoing it or maybe you're just doing too much but it's a sense of responsibility that you just can't avoid you can't overlook you can't see your sibling going wrong or doing something wrong and then you just ignore i wasn't raised like that so i always speak out i always talk and i feel like they actually hate me because of that they can't do some kind of things in my presence and i will just ignore aside from the fact that i cook for them when i'm around i i think they wish that i i'm not always with them they would aside from that part that probably they will be eating good food and no every other thing i think they would wish that i'm not with them because i will always complain about one thing or the other as long as they are not doing it right. i don't know if it's because i grew up as an ada or as the eldest in the house but i just feel that everybody is supposed to have that sense of responsibility but over time i started realizing that it's it's not for everybody in the house it's just for you as the eldest and no matter what you just have to lead and let them follow the advice that i will give to my younger self is that don't ever think that you're hated like in the house you are not i feel like you're the most loved that because you you actually get all the attention whether you like it or not, it might you might feel like it's bad. Uh, why are they always putting eyes on me? Why are they always um, cautioning me for every single thing? But you are actually getting all the attention from your parents. Don't ever feel like um, this is too much for you because I believe that if if it's something that you can't be. God wouldn't bring you out as the first child or as they are dying in your house. So go with the flow. Let your parents be your parents. Take the um, every advice that they give to you because growing up, you, you understand every single thing that they told you um, or every single thing that they were trying to do then. As time goes on, you will understand them. And sometimes you just feel like Maybe there are some things that you said to your parents or there are some things that you said to your mom that you wish you can actually go and take it back. Like, why do you hate me so much? I hate being your daughter. I hate being here. I don't like being here. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Take me back to my parents. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it feels good being another. And in my next life, I would want to be another. And I would like to come from the family that I actually came from. Uh, like I said, um, I don't know about other families because I hear stories about how they are being forced to um, take care of responsibilities. Sometimes people ask me, like, as an adult, are you the one that is fending for your family? I say, hell no, like, my parents never made me go through that, go through that stress at all. They never put me in that position. I don't know. I just feel like in as much as I came out from this, this kind of family but i know that there are a lot of people that are actually having it tough being the eldest in their house being the other in their house and um the only thing i will say is that 
be strong you were uh, you are built for this you are actually built to be another and you actually be built to be tough in your house continue being strong have a good relationship with your creator with god and everything will just fall into places for you don't ever think that um the fact that you are the, the one that is always giving out and then you don't get back that um is a bad thing i don't know about others but i would never want it to be the other way around i would always want to be the one because there is um this satisfaction that comes when you when you're the one um making the sacrifice and when you're the one um giving don't expect that okay um you're going to get it back from this person or you're going to get it back from your family your blessing would might even come from a total stranger altogether but just know that whatever you're doing you're great and continue being at that <laughs> give me my phone no, if not focus on me Don't i give my shame goes out to catch me <laughs> how are you i'm fine <laughs> Wear mask. <laughs> you cannot see your face. It's serious for this life now. Nah. Okay. <laughs> How are you feeling? Don't look at the camera. Fine. Are you sure you're feeling fine? How? <laughs> As you're doing this video. Like, how are you feeling now? Like this. Okay. My name is Blessing Onyebuchi. Don't tap the mic. Okay. Talk again. Move back inside. <laughs> turn small. Oh yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Don't turn again. Turn. It's okay. Turn like that. Uh -huh. Like this. Stay like that. Introduce yourself. My name is Blessing. My name is Introduce yourself means you tell us your name, what you do, where you live. All okay. Kind of My name is Blessing. My name is I am a product designer. Sorry. Cause, cause, cause. <laughs> <laughs>